Hi everyone, in this video you will see how to set up and use Raspberry Pi without a monitor. For that you only need a network cable and your personal PC. I divide this video into two parts and I will explain why. If you just got your Raspberry Pi, I recommend you to fully follow this video and install the latest Raspberry version to your SD card. However, if you have your Raspberry Pi for a while and don't want to reinstall your Raspberry, you can start from part 2 of this video. So, let's start. Part 1. Install Raspberry on an SD card. First of all, we need to go on an official Raspberry website and download a latest Raspberry OS version. Right now, I will download zip file with the Raspberry OS. Also, I forgot to mention, you will find all links in the description below. Next step is to download Etcher. We will use this program to write Raspberry on an SD card. I prefer this program because it is easy to use. When your browser will finish to download Raspberry, you will need to extract Raspberry from a zip file. I'm using WinRAR for that, but you can use standard Windows tool, it doesn't matter. Anyway, how you can see, I already extracted a Raspberry image and now it is the time to write our Raspberry to an SD card. Let's open Etcher. First, we need to select a Raspberry image. Second, we need to choose our SD card and press button continue. And last, we need to press a button flash. Now, how you can see, it is writing Raspberry to an SD card. It will take a while, so I will skip this part on the video. How you can see, now SD card has 62 megabyte size. It's fine. Now it is a special partition on USD where you can find configuration files. But anyway, now it is the time to remove your SD card from a computer and surprise, you need to put it back to your PC. Because in the next part of this video we will add one extra file to the special partition on your SD card. Part 2. Set up a connection to a Raspberry Pi. First of all, let's check our cable connections. Connect a power supply cable to a micro USB on a Raspberry Pi and do not forget to connect a network cable. But before we start to use our Raspberry Pi, we need to add one extra file to a SD card which we are using with our Raspberry Pi. So connect your SD card to your computer and open in a file explorer. Now create a text file and name it as Sage. Also do not forget to delete an extension. If you cannot see file extensions on your computer, open a tab view in a file explorer and check file name extensions. Now you can see and change file extensions. I am using Windows 8, but this doesn't matter, any windows allow to change file extensions. Now remove an SD card from a computer and put back to a Raspberry Pi. To connect to a Raspberry Pi we will need three programs. All links you can find in the description below. First program is an advanced IP scanner. This software will help us to find an IP address of our Raspberry Pi. So let's download. Second program has name Patty. This software will allow us to connect to our Raspberry Pi. It's using SSH protocol. Now you probably understand why we created an empty file with the name SSH. This file will switch on SSH on our Raspberry Pi. Anyway, let's get download this program. And last but not least, we need to download Tightwind C. You will use this program instead of an extra monitor. Ok, I assume that you already installed all software, so let's start to set up a Raspberry Pi. 
First, you need to open an advanced IP scanner and of course, do not forget to power up a Raspberry Pi. Now, press a button scan. How you can see, an advanced IP scanner found a Raspberry Pi. Please remember this IP address, we will use it to connect to a Raspberry Pi. Now, open the next program named Patsy. In a host name field, write IP address for your Raspberry Pi. Also, port must be 22 and connection type as Sage. When you will be ready, press a button Open. You will see a standard security warning message. Press Yes. Why? Because it's your Raspberry Pi. Now, we will use this program to set up Raspberry Pi. And first of all, we need to log in. All new Raspberry Pi have the same login and password. Login is Pi and password is Raspberry. Also, when you will type password, you cannot see it. It's fine, just press Enter at the end. And do not forget, you can find all commands for this console in the description below. Now, let's check updates for our Raspberry Pi. Type a command sudo apt-get update and press Enter. I will resize this window for a better view. Now, when it finished to update the system, we need to make sure that we have all important packages for our network connection. You can copy and paste next commands from the description below. So, next line that you need to type in the console is sudo apt-get install libnss-mdns. When installation will be done, type next command sudo apt-get install avahi-utils Also, all updates and installation may take a while. Now, how you might remember, we already installed TitwinC on our Windows machine. And now we need to install a TitwinC server on our Raspberry Pi. So you need to type sudo apt-get install TitwinC server and agree to installation. For that press Y and enter. Now, let's check our TitwinC server. For that, type TitwinC server and press Enter. How you can see TitwinC server asks to create a password. I suggest that you need to create a strong password for your Raspberry Pi. And again, you cannot see a password that you type. It is a standard security feature in Linux. Also, TitwinC server will ask you about view-only mode. I will answer no on this question. Right now, we are ready to use Raspberry Pi without a monitor. But before, I want to change one small setting. I want to add TitwinC server to after startup list. Because if I will not do this, I must open Patsy every time I power up a Raspberry Pi and start TitwinC server manually. So, let's change after startup settings on a Raspberry Pi. Copy next command and press enter. Now we are in the text editor. For a navigation, you need to use arrow keys. You need to write the same line and put in the same place.
After that, you need to save changes. Press Ctrl plus X and answer to a question by pressing Y and Enter. Now we came back to a console and we just need to reboot a Raspberry Pi. Type sudo reboot and press Enter. How you can see, we got an error message and it is fine, it just means that Raspberry Pi is rebooting. So, close this console window and open VNC Viewer. In the remote host field, type an IP address to a Raspberry Pi. Also, make sure that port is 5901. When you will finish, press a button connect. Now you get a small window where you need to type a password for your Raspberry Pi. You created this password in a party console before. And now you can use your Raspberry Pi without a monitor. Thank you for watching and good luck with your gig experiments. If you have any questions, just write a comment and I will answer. Bye!